Hi, I'm Gareth Pronovost and I'm an Airtable and Zapier consultant. In this video, we're going to be doing a deep dive on using Airtable as a CRM and pipeline uh, negotiator. So essentially we're imagining a scenario that looks a little bit like this. We can have three steps. Step one is we have this data for a potential prospect or for a prospect and we need to move them through our pipeline. And then step two, we're going to actually offer an initial consultation or a situation where we uh, somehow touch the customer and give an estimate of what we think uh, this type of work that they're looking for would cost. And then in step three, we're going to actually imagine that that prospect has uh, signed up with our uh, proposal and has gone into our actual client. So they've changed from a prospect to an actual client. And then we're going to take them through the steps of our business. So following those three steps, uh, I'm going to be starting from the perspective that in step one, you already know how to get that client data in here. I did record a previous video on using Zapier to build automations to get that information into your CRM. I will include that link below in the description. So definitely check that out if you're not uh, up to speed on that. So that's where we're going to be taking off from. And uh, without further ado, let's jump on in. Welcome to Entrepreneurship by the Numbers, where we help unlock the potential of your business with data-driven metrics. All right, so we will be starting from a position here where we are assuming that we've already loaded some data into our database. So that data is gonna be different for every business, but let's jump on in and take a look at this example. So we, in this example, the first, I don't know how many columns, nine or so, uh, are gonna have uh, preloaded data. So anything from, like in this example, first name, last name, email, phone number, company, maybe where we got the lead from, you get the idea. And so all of this data is gonna be set up when that client first schedules that consultation, whether it's through a Zapier integration or whether it's something that is done manually in your business. Uh, in either case, it's gonna be here in the uh, CRM. And from there, we're gonna look at a consultation URL. And on this one, this is going to be a form that's gonna link back to another table. So we have a table that's gonna be tracking our contact data, which is what we're looking at. But then we're gonna also track the consultations that we have with our prospects. And when they become clients, then we're gonna track all of the touch points that we have. And then we also wanna track our team members. And this is how we're gonna link different team members to different projects. So, uh, but on this consultation URL, let's jump into that consultation table real quick. We are going to track things like this is gonna be the name of the contact based on a, a formula field. So we're just looking at the contact name and adding consultation. So real quickly, I'll show you an example here. We might have a consultation that attaches to John Smith and it's gonna just pop in like that. And then we're gonna have these different questions that we go through on that consultation call. So how do we get this to be uh, created the way we want it? Well, I advise using the form view. So we've built a unique form view here and we're gonna to link to the contact in the form and then we're gonna go through our questions. And our questions are gonna depend largely on our sales script. And this is where you get to put that data directly into your CRM for, in the case of Airtable. So you're actually having that sales call with this, uh, this form up on your screen and you can just run through those questions. You never miss a question and you're able to just put those data points directly into it. So I'll give you an example. Um, what system are you using now? Could be you know, a potential question. And so things like that uh, are what you would fill in here. You could have however many you so choose to have. Now we're gonna go back into contacts and we're gonna check out, uh, check out this URL. So we have a custom built URL that's pre-filling with the information from the contact name. And the reason that I really like that system is it's one less thing that I have to fill out on the form when I'm on that call. And so in order to get that uh, set up, you can build a, a specific formula, it's a concatenate formula. And what I've pasted in at the beginning of it is the actual URL for the form. And then Airtable allows us to pre-fill data. And so that's where this next part comes in. You say, the following, you use question mark, prefill, underscore, and then you have to put in the name of the field. In this case, I want to prefill the contact uh, field on the form, which is in the consultations, and then you put, and you have to put that in exactly, and then you put the equal sign, and then you need to fill in what 
data you want it to fill in with. So I want it to fill in with first name, space, last name, and you have to denote a space with uh, percent %20 in uh, URLs. So if that's confusing, you can skip it. But essentially what this is allowing me to do is when I click on this, let's go back to that consultations real quick uh, and reset our grid view. Okay, so we have no consultations. When I click on this link, I want to pop up the consultation form so that I can have that consultation call and you see that it's already pre-filled out with the name of the person that I'm doing the consultation for. So I could ask these questions on a call. Uh, they're currently using, I don't know, some other uh, system, maybe Pipedrive, and uh, but you know maybe the question two is why do you want to use Airtable, etc. Click submit. Thank you for submitting the form, and I can close out of here. Now the really great part about that is I have an automatic consultation built for uh, for that client. And, or prospect, and I can then jump back into my consultations table and see all of the answers that I put in here. So, hopefully that wasn't overwhelming. If the pre-fill gets uh, confusing, check out on Airtable's uh, website. They have some advice about how to do that. But also, if uh, you know if it's too confusing, you can always just select, just put in the URL without the pre-fill data, and then you can just pick the uh, the uh, client or the prospect that you're that you're meeting with. So that's, that's what these uh, fields are for. Then we're going to jump into pr uh, the prospect status and we're going to move them through our, uh, our like pipeline, which is going to take them from pre-consultation to we've had the consultation and they're awaiting extra info. And then we're going to move them to we're awaiting that proposal. And then we're going to be in negotiation mode. Once we've uh, sent the proposal, we're going to wait to hear back from them on which option they like. I always like to submit multiple options in a proposal. And then uh, on the last two, we're either going to close that prospect and lose them or close the prospect and win the business. And so that's what that looks like. And you'll see that we have a couple other things where we uh, have a couple other data entry points for the that are related to the proposal. So we'll drop the proposal in once we uh, create that proposal. I like having a copy right here in a PDF form. And then we can also, once they have chosen uh, to go ahead and, and uh, use our services, then we can pick what option, you know, just uh, denote which option they have gone with. And uh, then that gets us into project status. So now they're an actual client. So now how are we moving them through our service? And so whatever our status looks like in our business, that's, that's the, those are the different steps that we're going to have listed out here. Uh, this is just an example here. And then um, we will also want to track the touch points that we have with these uh, clients and, and when we spoke with them. And that's all going to relate back to that last table. But what I really want to show you in this video is how to build those views so that you're looking at exactly the data you want to look at. Because again, when we're in master view, this just looks like so much noise. I mean, it's, it's just so much data, right? Really hard to make decisions, really hard to move the ball forward when you're looking at that much noise. So what we want to do is build a bunch of views. So here are the different views we're going to look at. We've got folks who are pending consultation, step one. We've got folks who are in our pipeline, meaning we sent them, a, we had a consultation, we sent them a proposal. And then we've got our actual clients and we want to work them through our operations. And so that's what we're going to be looking at in those three uh, views. So pending consultations, how would you set this up? Well. This, the data that's relevant here is just the data that pertains to uh, before you've had that consultation. So before going into that consultation, I want to review the way that they answered the questions when they asked for the consultation. So I'm looking at all those data points that, st that we started with. And then I want to be able to click on that consultation when it's time. Uh, you'll see that I moved consultation date over here so that I could do a quick sort by uh, you know, consultation date and boom, now I can you know, easily look at you know, when my next consultation is coming up and who is it with and you know, what other information do I need. When I'm ready to have that consultation, I can just click on that URL. It's going to take me there and have that automatically filled out because of the pre-fill. So that's, that's view one. Now once they've moved from having had that consultation, I don't uh, want them showing up in this uh, view anymore. So what I would say here would be to add a filter where that consultation uh, is, is, not, is, is blank only, right? So consultation is blank only or is empty. And you'll see now, so because we already created a consultation for John Smith, 
now then he that uh, prospect has disappeared from this view so this is how we're going to filter this to only show us those folks who we haven't already spoken with and who we're awaiting a consultation with all right so that's stage one stage two is that pipeline view and so in the pipeline view we want to take a look at all the folks that we've had a conversation with and we want to kind of group them by their pros by by the stage that they're in and so you'll see that we've you know eliminated some of the things here and we can in start including different uh, different variables. One of the filters we're going to want to add, though, of course, is where uh, we want it to be that the consultation is, oops, excuse me, consultation is not blank because if it is empty, that means we haven't spoken with them, and of course, they're not going to really be in uh, this part of our pipeline yet. We want this this part of our pipeline to be showing only those folks who we've already had an initial consultation with and they're awaiting a proposal or something, or, or we're you know, still in a negotiation mode. And so you'll see that we've actually said the project status has to be one of these four. So if it's closed, either won or lost, we don't want to have them on the pipeline, right? All right, so lastly, we're going to be looking at our open projects. And so for that, I prefer the Kanban view. And I like to set up the filter here where the option selected uh, is not empty. So that means we, they have to have picked an option, either one, two, or three, in order to move on into our workflow. So let me show you a little bit about how this might work. Going back into that master view, uh, we have these five folks. So how would that work? Let's suppose that we had a pending consultation, and that consultation came, and we... Uh, this, so this is consultation two now. This one's for Jane Doe, and you know we could ask her our questions. Uh, you know I don't know what... Uh, Maybe she's using Excel and Google Sheets currently. And yeah, we go through the, the, the sales script and click Submit. Okay, so now that's, she's going to disappear now from, uh, from this view. She's no longer a pending consultation. She's now in the pipeline view. So now she's, she's no longer pre-consultation. So we'll need to switch both of these into, a, let's say, a waiting proposal because we have to put a proposal together for these, uh, for these deals. Once we've included a proposal here, shot off an email, we would uh, create a touch point. And we would, we would simply say, this is automatically creating with Jane Doe. It's linking to her because we created it in her uh, record. And we could say sent proposal. And it's going to have today's created date. That's going to populate automatically. And we can assign a follow-up date. Let's say we want to reach back out to her on the 24th. So we submit that. And now that touch point is set. We could save the proposal here and we would change awaiting proposal, proposal to negotiation. So now Jane Doe is in our negotiation stage of our business. And so we've sent a proposal and we are waiting to hear back to see what option, uh, if any, she chooses. Of course, if we hear back and she uh, decides that she is going a different direction, we will close her as lost. But let's assume that we close her as one and she picks uh, a set um, option. Let's suppose we gave her three options and she picks option two. So we'll select the option that she picks. Maybe you'll have another field in here in terms of the, the dollar amount of that if you're tracking your finances as well. And, uh, and then you're going to close her to one. Now she's disappeared from your pipeline because she is now an active client. And so we're going to switch over to that third view and we're going to look for Jane Doe. There she is. She's automatically showing up. And you can see that we last spoke to her on 9-16. And the next due date that we had planned on speaking to her was going to be 923. And so as she moves through our process of our business, so maybe we first create an invoice. Once we've created that, we send her the invoice and now she is in payment pending. And we can just move the card on like that. As we create new touch points with her, we can uh, just as easily come on down to that. If we can find it, create a new record in touch points and we can say, something like this where we uh, sent invoice for option, what, what option did she pick? Option two, create something like that and we'll say our next follow-up is now 925 for example. Cool, let's close that out and you'll see that uh, that data should update here. And then what we're going to do is uh, move her into initial call and we'll have that, you know, whatever the step is that's involved there 
and so on and so forth. So we constantly have a view of when we last spoke to the client, when we are planning on having our next deliverable due, and all of that data, again, lives back here in touch points, so we can always you know, just find it right there. And so ultimately, when we've moved this client through to the, uh, the end stage, they'll, they'll be there in work completed. And if we, wanted to, if we had a lot of clients sitting here in completed work, we could add an additional filter where uh, you know, work completed is blank. So uh, we can just filter out anything in that. So we can go for the option selected and just say it is, uh, is not work oops, not option selected, where work completed is project status. So we just go to project status is not work completed. And so even though this now still shows up, uh, it's not going to uh, get cluttered with a bunch of things that we don't want to look at because we want to see those clients that we're actively managing right now. All right, well, as always, I hope you found that to be really rich and valuable information. If you did, and if you enjoyed this video, please do give us a thumbs up. It would really uh, be greatly appreciated. And don't forget to click subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. If you have any custom work yourself for your business that uh, you'd like a little bit of help with us from, uh, definitely check the description below. I've included a link to my Calendly where you can set up an appointment uh, with me and we can chat about your Airtable needs. In the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire.